What I'm going to do is breathe. I do four breaths. The first two breaths were the way that I breathed, practiced diligently for about 30 years, which was breathing in my belly as though it were a balloon in all, like all directions, not just forward and back, side, side, up and down, feeling the volume of breathing a little bit below my diaphragm. As though, I had just studied, you know, all these different practices to do abdominal breathing, and that was the image that I carried. And shared. And so I'm going to do two breathings that way, and then I'm going to do two breaths a different way. And I'm going to start the breath behind my stomach, which is here, on the left side, in a cavity called the omental bursa. It's also called the lesser peritoneal sac, compared to the greater peritoneal sac, which is all the rest of the, the sac that's holding my organs below my diaphragm. Now, then you have another sac around your lungs, the pleuro sac. You have another sac around your um, pericardium. pericardium, which comes from a different place, that one. The lungs come from the same. Because when this breathing starts, there, there wasn't a diaphragm. It was like one space. But for now, looking below. What I found when I started to breathe in this way was that it was amazing. It's very fluid versus air. Not that you really breathe air, but it feels like fluid. It feels like ebbing and flowing of fluid. No breath is ever the same. And eventually, one of the Taoists, this is more Taoist practice, although the yogis have the breath without breath or something like that, the breath of no breath. So it's a practice that is, was in ancient cultures. Um, it starts here, but eventually it reaches the groin. And it does move up the spine, it does move into the thoracic cavity, it moves through the whole body eventually. A key that you found it is that you, you won't anymore feel this balloon. You'll feel this kind of thing. The other is that you're, if you've been breathing a long time and extending your breath, you will not be able to breathe as long. Another one is that all of a sudden you will gasp for breath. What other wonderful thing? Um, that the key is that you have no effort. You just keep reducing your effort. In the omental bursa, there is an opening called the epichloic foramen. It's also called the omental foramen, I think. And it opens to the greater peritoneal sac. But what I found was that it opened when I really diminished my effort, I went into another space. And then to go to another space, I had to diminish my effort. And then I had to diminish my effort. So every place that I went to go to a further place wasn't like extending my breath, wasn't like adding more effort. It was all about diminishing effort, diminishing effort. <coughs> what I feel happens, and what the professor said in some of his other writings, was that the fascial sheaths, he didn't say it like this exactly, but that the, the, the fascia around the organs gets stopped. <coughs> and so when you diminish your effort, you, the movement can get finer and finer and open up between these blue places. And according to this tradition, when it's, it's ultimately breathing in the Dantian even though it's starting here, and I'll say something else in a minute, um, that when you find this breathing, the chi, this is a bag of chi, they say a bag of chi, that the chi will spread into the bone marrow. And when the chi is in the bone marrow, that's the secret of health and longevity. And it's in the bone marrow that we produce our blood cells and it, the first place we produced it was in our yolk sac. 
Second place was when the liver developed, it took over the function. Then the spleen took over the function. I want to say thymus. Is the thymus? I'm afraid I make that up. I'm not sure. Thymus about that. and the spleen. Yeah. 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 And then eventually <coughs> it's in the bone marrow. So now we're producing it in the bone marrow. The other thing is that as the gut tube develops, it's just a tube, but then it's going to rotate 360 degrees. It actually will come out. It's, it's, it, it comes out of the body and then it's drawn back into the body and it roots below the navel. So this is the entrance and the exit. And so the, this, the end becomes the dante end. So now I'm just going to do it. I was along that. So two breaths the old way and two breaths the, this other way, which I only breathe that way now. That was the four breaths. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened when I found this breath was that I healed. You healed? Healed. healed. I was healed. very, very ill and housebound for three years, and by discovering this breathing, my health changed dramatically. Then your chi started. It was completely different. So uh, my hands started getting warm, and I started to feel the. the the energy circulating, which would have not been circulating in the earlier breaths, which felt oh, very Can't full, very full and very nice, but more mechanical rather than energetic. And this definitely an energetic mm -hmm. component came in. Uh, but the whole the, the the second breathing felt more like an exploration every time that you did it, rather than. A fully, you know, rather than a something more formulaic. And that sense of exploration, it felt like something came in and then it spread a little bit and then maybe it went back a tiny bit and then it spread somewhere else and then it kind of came back. And like it wasn't this feeling, 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 feeling. It was more like very, very fluid, but like many layered. Layered isn't quite right. Like or, an internal matrix of yeah. you know, filling different parts versus the external. It's just a more outward, big, expansive thing. Okay. I felt on um, the first breath, uh, mm -hmm. like the, the body walls, you know, really, mm -hmm. then the diaphragm really strongly active and uh, a little bit the will. And in the second two breaths, um, I felt the, the movement under my hands went like so deep in. 
you know, but it wasn't a, a willing in. It was, I don't know, it was just following something inward. And then out of that, I felt this real power, not the power of the will, but like a like, and it, and it looks like a seed that started. And then it got very, um, it did get very full, but it wasn't so much like the body walls type of a fullness, but more um, a filling in, inside. The key is place your hand on your stomach and feel when you push out your stomach. I mean, I exaggerated that. Or you go behind the stomach to begin to breathe in this other bag and just diminish. You may just fill that bag. Or you may go somewhere else. In other words, that's your own journey. But just keep reducing your effort. And when you feel, if you feel, you go something like that, then go back to just, no, don't do anything with your breath. Just go back to breathing without thinking about it. Just follow your breath without will or without using this until finally you feel, okay, maybe I'll do it again. But don't force it because if you force it, you're not going to find it only going to find it through decreasing your effort. I have a question. Did you arrive there through um, following your alpha? No, what I, what I did what was, was I see why you said that. I because I felt it go Yeah, it also kind of dropped at some yeah. point. Because in breathing this way, it takes effort. And so I went, I had to let go of my effort. So it wasn't an out-breath, but effort. But it may have been an out-breath, but it was the effort that I let go of, the tension. Naranjan asked if I went into my exhale to find it, and it was that I just let go of the tension that was created by the, I mean, I also practiced some Taoist breathing, which was really, you know, strong getting that this area really filled and all um, but this is the opposite of that not to say that's bad that I'm not saying good or bad it's just a different breathing <laughs>